and welcome options traders. Hello, everyone. I wanted to post another technical video here on Wilder's average true range. And this is important for options traders because it's an indication of volatility. And as many of you know that volatility is the key ingredient to an option. So in order to make better options trading decisions, you have to have a handle on volatility. Is it rising? Is it falling? And Wilder's average true range is a wonderful way to easily tell. So let's take a look at Wilder's average true range. Well, Wilder's average true range was developed by J. Wells Wilder in the late 70s. And yes, this is the same J. Wells Wilder who developed RSI, Relative Strength Index, that we've seen before. Remember, though, Wilder's average true range is a measure of volatility. It is non-directional. Most of the technical indicators that we've looked at, MACD, Stochastics, RSI, almost all of your technical indicators are trying to determine if the stock is about to rise or if it's about to fall. They are directional indicators. Volatility is different. Volatility looks at the, let's call it the explosiveness of prices. Are we looking at big moves or are we looking at very small, tiny, moderate moves? It has nothing to do with direction. We can have very large moves going up and have very high volatility. We could have very large moves going down and also have large volatility. So when volatility is rising, it doesn't necessarily mean that the stock price is rising or falling. It just means that the size of those price changes is getting bigger. Now, once again, volatility is the absolute most important ingredient. It is the essence of an option. And I will be posting more videos in the future about why that is. But for right now, let's take a look at the technical indicator of Wilder's average true range and how it works. First of all, let's take a look at standard volatility, kind of a regular plain old volatility calculation. That is always based on closing price to closing price. So when you're looking at your broker's platform and it says that the stock is trading at 20% volatility or that this option is trading at 35% volatility, it is always measuring it on the closing prices. That's all we're looking at. We're saying how big is today's closing price relative to yesterday's closing price. But there's a problem with that. And this is what J. Wells Wilder was trying to solve. So here's the problem. For example, let's say that this is today's candle and we have kind of this short bodied green candle, green meaning that the closing price was higher than the open. And then tomorrow we get this candle. So what happens here, we get this large gap up and yet the stock traded down. So here's the problem that you have with a standard volatility calculation. So just as a little refresher on candlesticks, remember that the body only shows the opening and closing prices. So in order to get a green candle, it means that the closing had to be higher than the open. So our opening price was here. Here was our low. And here is the closing price. This little shadow up here is the high trade of the day. So because the closing price was higher than the open, we shade that box in green. However, tomorrow's candle, this is our opening price up here. And this is our closing price. The close is below the open and that's why the candle is shaded in red. However, remember that the candle does not get its red body based on today's close compared to yesterday's close. It is only based on today's close relative to the opening. So here's what can happen. Even though we had some pretty good volatility, here was our closing price from yesterday. Here was our opening trade of the day. Here was our high of the day. We had some pretty high changes in stock prices here. So to put some numbers to it, let's say that the opening trade down here was 100 and maybe it closed up here at 102. And then on this day, let's say it opened at 110, but then it closed down here at 102. Well, that's some pretty good volatility. Lots of price movement going on in there, but take a look at the closing prices. It closed at exactly the same price on the red candle as it did on the green. So from a standard volatility calculation, it would say that there was zero volatility in those two days, when in fact that just simply wasn't true. So Wilder's average true range is going to correct this problem. So here's the way it works. Wilder's average true range uses three calculations, and it's going to take the highest of these three values. And then, of course, it will take an average of those and look at the average true range. So here's calculation number one. 
it's going to look at the high minus the low. So let's say that this is today's candle. Here's our high trade and here's our low trade. And it's simply going to subtract off those values and say, what is it? How much variation do we have between the high and the low? And it's going to store that. And it's going to say, let's compare that to two other calculations. Calculation number two is going to say, let's take the low of today, the lowest trade, and subtract off the previous close. So for instance, if this is our candle configuration here, it's going to look at today's low, the lowest trade of the day, and it's going to compare it to yesterday's close. Remember that candle is green because the close is above the open. So that's the closing price up there. And so whenever Wilder compares the calculations to yesterday's candle, it is always to the closing price. A lot of times new traders get that confused and they think you're comparing the low to the low or the low to the high. You're always comparing today's candle to the previous close. So calculation number two says, let's take today's low and compare it to yesterday's close. And whatever that number is, we're going to store that. Incidentally, we will always take what's called the absolute value. Whether that number is positive or negative doesn't matter. We're just going to pretend that it's positive. We just want to know the size of that move. And finally, calculation number three is going to take today's highest trade and compare it to the prior close. So if this is our candle configuration right here, it's going to look at today's highest trade and it's going to compare it to yesterday's or the previous close. So once again, that candle's green because that top of the box right there is the closing price. Close was higher than the open. That's why we get a green box. And so it's going to look at the change in those values. Once again, doesn't matter if it comes out to be positive or negative, we're always going to assume that it's positive. So how do we read Wilder's average true range? Well, remember, most importantly, you are not looking for bullish or bearish. Too many times new traders do that. They see that the line, the technical indicator here, the average true range line is rising. They go, oh, it means that we're bullish or it means that we're overbought. Not true. It just means that the change in these stock prices, whether the stock price is going up or down, the change in those prices, the volatility is getting bigger. Also remember, average true range uses the absolute value of ranges, which I've talked about. So we do not get any negative values in there. So we can use average true range to show the crowd's eagerness of a move. So perhaps you see a big move in the stock price going up, but we really don't get that much of a move in the ATR reading the average true range. And that might show that there's not a lot of eagerness or a lot of enthusiasm behind that move. What you'd like to do, all things being constant, is that if we see a big move in the stock, let's say going up, we'd like to see a lot of volatility behind it because there's a lot of buying pressure. We're getting big gaps and big price changes in that stock. Now, one other thing to consider, because we're looking at the absolute values, we're not looking at their percentage, relative to the stock's price. It's going to be a mathematical fact that your low price stocks will have lower average true ranges than your higher price stocks. So don't get too caught up into the numbers. Instead, look at the shape of the chart. Is it trending up? Is it trending up quickly? Is it falling? That's more of what you want to look at rather than the numbers. And also consequently, you really can't make comparisons, especially if these stock prices are different. You don't want to compare Amazon at 1800 to General Electric at 15. They're going to be vastly different readings. Again, what you're looking for is the overall shape of those ATR lines. All right, let's take a look at a spreadsheet to see how Wilder's average true range is actually calculated. I've downloaded three months worth of data for NVIDIA. So here are the dates and we've got the open high low close. And what we're going to do for the first calculation is very simply going to be the high minus the low. And the reason is, remember that calculations number two and three need to compare the previous close. Well, we don't have a previous close if this is our first date here on April 16. So the first data point for Wilder's ATR, depending on how far you look back, typically it's gonna be a 14 period move, but wherever you start, that will be your first calculation, simply the high minus the low. So I'm going to record that as what he called the true range. That was just the high minus the low. Now we move to the next day, open high, low, close. I'm going to look at my three calculations. High minus the low, high minus the low right here was 705. High minus the previous close, so the high of this day right here, 
compared to yesterday's close was 691. That's a second calculation. Calculation number three right here, the low minus the previous close. So we take today's low, 231.35, subtract off yesterday's close, 231.49. And of course, that gives us 14 cents. So what he's going to do is to take the largest value of these three cells, which is 705, and that gets recorded as today's true range. And we're just going to do this every single day, go through all three calculations, record them, and finally, once we have 14 days worth of information, we can now figure out the average true range. So what we're going to do here in this column, which is our average true range column, we're going to look back 14 days. Of course, we could change our look back period. This is the standard default is 14 days. That's what he suggested. But we're gonna look back 14 days and we're going to simply take the average of those numbers. And that's our first data point right here for average true range. Now for subsequent calculations, we're going to do a little bit of a smoothing technique here, which we've seen in other indicators. But for example, for this date right here, I'm going to pretend that the previous 13 days were 710. So I'm going to take 13 times 710, and I'm simply going to add today's true range of 806 and divide by 14. And that's going to give me 717. Then I'm going to take 717 times 13. I'm going to pretend that was my number for the last 13 days. I'm going to add on today's true range of 1193, divide by 14, and that's going to give me 751. And so this column right here, if we graph that, that's going to give you your average true range. Now, if we look down here, Today is 7.15, it's the weekend, so this is the last trading day right here, was a reading of 6.46. So if you've done our calculations correctly, we should see a reading very close to this in the E-Trade platform. So let's go take a look. So here we are in the E-Trade platform, and if we go to our studies, and then down here to all studies, and we're going to look up here under the A's under average true range, ATR, right there. Click there. There's the default look back period of 14 days. We can change the color of our line. I'll leave it as black and we choose save and it's going to appear. This is a lower study. It does not appear as an overlay on our price chart because we're not comparing it to dollars. We're looking at the kind of the average of these three calculations. So it's a lower study. And if we raise this up a bit, and right over here on the right, you can see a reading of 6.48, pretty close. I think we had 6.46. Part of the reason that we're off is that it depends on where you start your calculation. Because when you go through that smoothing, that it, there's a little bit of a carryover. So this platform might be going back a full year or more to start those calculations. But you can see pretty close. But I just want you to get an idea of what you're looking at. But the main thing you want to do with this indicator is notice that we can go through periods when it's relatively low. We get these nice big spikes in here. And that's almost always going to correspond to very large candles and or very large price moves. So this is obviously this big spike in average true range is coming from this precipitous fall right here and these very large candles. Lots of big price changes going on there. So we can have a lot of confidence that there is heavy selling coming in there because our ATR reading has taken this big spike and is at a relative high. Now, another interesting spot on the graph I see is take a look over here. See how these stock prices were rising? Fairly small candles though, but we were getting rising prices. But take a look at what ATR was doing. It was falling. So that might give us a little less confidence that it's really due to buying pressure coming in there. Remember, there's two ways you can get prices to rise. One, you can get very heavy volume but you can also just get people becoming overzealous with their prices and just bidding things to high levels without there really being high volume, in which case you could run out of buyers quickly. And in fact, take a look what happened. We did get this nice little dip down here. So it kind of gives you some indications into saying how much eagerness or enthusiasm do we have through this rally right here. It doesn't look like it was all that strong because Wilder's average true range was falling. Now, one final thing, as I mentioned in the presentation, remember you can't really make direct comparisons with these numbers because we're looking at 
absolute values. We're not looking at them compared to the stock's price. So notice here for NVIDIA, we're running from a low of about four on the chart to maybe 11, 12, somewhere at the high. Let's go to Amazon. And you can see that we're running from about 15 to 55. So it doesn't necessarily mean that there's more volatility in here. It's just that it's a far more expensive stock. So don't try to make comparisons in these numbers from stock to stock, unless they happen to be trading at very close to the same prices. Instead, pay attention to the relative changes. That's what you wanna watch. So I hope that gives you another technical tool to put in your toolbox there. It's going to be very helpful once we start talking more in detail about volatility, because again, that is the true essence of an option. And if you are trading options without understanding volatility, you are not trading options. It's going to be way too easy to step into traps. So I want to start laying some of the groundwork here. And by using Wilder's average true range, it can give you a very good look into the crowd's mind about volatility. If you'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course at optionsa-z.com, or please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z. It's a free site. We'd love to see you there.